bumper week up ahead out in League 2 as we have a bit of a double match week to get you up to date with. We'll take a look at your latest round picks and mine next. Production video today. We take a look at match number two. Match day down by what is it? 25? Something like that out in League 2. And we'll get to that. Oh, yes, we'll get to that in just one second. If you're new to the channel, stop what you're doing. Smash that subscribe. Give you a bang and see all things League 2 related. Blackburn Rose related. World football related. Oh, no one. Ruski, that's right. Bit, a bit of a weird one at the, uh, the League 2 this past week because of the FA Cup. Only four matches to bring you up to date with from last week. But then we've got a bumper week starting tomorrow, hopefully, uh, on Tuesday. Today is Monday, so uh, depending on when this video goes up. It could be today, actually. It could be today. But we'll talk about that in a minute. I want to make a big shout out, of course, to the patrons. You know who you are, supporting the channel behind the bloody scenes. I do appreciate that, guys. So if, uh, yeah, it does, uh, does get me out of bed each and every, every day. Uh, so I do... I do appreciate the support. If you are interested in becoming the latest member of the gang, there is a link down below, patreon.com forward slash roasties. But anyway, we've got a lot to talk about, so let's get into it. Of course, kicking it all off with a look back. And of course, the games that uh, took place uh, last week. Well, let's take a look at it then, shall we? Of course, kicking it all off with uh, the midweek game, which was Mansfield up against Salford. That was on Tuesday, the 5th of Jan. And up was a 2 1 win for Mansfield. George Lapsley on the scholarship with Jordan Bowery as well. Deshaun Bernard getting a consolation goal there for Salford as they lost this one. My picks are on the left. The real deal on the right. As you can see, I did that pretty shitty on that one. Next up, we have, of course, a lot of these games did not take place. Uh, Cambridge against Bar uh, Cambridge against Harrogate did take place, and it was a 2-1 win for Cambridge. Uh, get himself back in the top three. The uh, Probably one of the only uh, the, the top uh, the, the the top three teams in action this past week. Joe Ironside and Wes Houlihan on the score for Cambridge. Jack Muldoon got opened up scoring for Harrogate. Lloyd Kelly got himself sent off. Uh, not good enough for them though. Uh, actually, the two 0 not too shabby. Carlisle, uh, they were uh, were not in action. They were supposed to take on Lane or but we'll you'll have to wait and see on that one. I went actually with a three one win myself. Port Vale though, were in action. They did beat Grimsby. They smashed them. Is it Tisdale now in charge of Grimsby? He's got a lot of work on to do for himself. I like him though. He's a good manager. But he ain't no Holloway boys. Uh, Found score three 0 in the end. Actually, with a two 0 myself. Sean Brisley, uh, Devante Rodney, and Luke uh, Waterfall uh, with a big fat OG giving uh, Port Vale the three points with three goals as well. Southend. I guess Barrow will get to that one in a minute. Salford against Colchester United. Uh, that did not take place. I should have a 2 1 win. Scunthorpe against uh, Bradford. Uh, that did not take place either. Uh, one with a draw. And then Scott Southend did play Barrow. And I actually went with a 2-0 uh, win myself. It was a 1-0. Uh, Rocco Rico Hackett Fairchild and Greg Holford. Get himself sent off. I didn't get one of these, that's for sure. But uh, I got three out of five, four, which ain't too shabby, boys and girls. Let's take a look at the situation out in the league. I believe it looks like this. It is Carlisle still in the charge. That's what we like to see. Newport County doing bits and Cambridge in the top three. And Morecambe also in there. They were in FA Cup action against... Who were they up against? They, were, they lost anyway, big time. 4-0. I can't even remember who they were playing. But uh, but hey, hey-ho, away they go. Crawler up there as well as a Chapman and the Vegans in the top uh, top seven there. As for the foot the table, South End Grimsby going down as it stands. But Barrow aren't out of the way just yet. Neither is Stevenage and Scunthorpe can't be excluded just yet. Let's take a look at the next round of matches then in just a second. Let's take a look at your picks. There's a, right, a recap of the criteria. Not one, you're in the shit face game. Two to three, straight face game. And if you get all four, you're in the top bins. There's nobody of those though. Irish Stringer did all right. Richard Dawson did bits. Oli Hambling also did very, very well. Okay, did okay. Yannick Buster did bits. And Jokic Jakobsen kicked ass and he took some names right in the corner there. He's right there. Uh, kicking off further then. Oh, well done to you. I think you did uh, probably one of the better ones. Game Child did bits. Jamie Good did poop. Uh, the D man also had a shock about it's okay. Uh, Zappy Crook did poop. Um, Escobedo, not too shabby. Russell Frost also did very, very well. Navy Neva kicking ass, taking it down in, uh, down in uh, New Zealand. Of course, Alex Well also did bits. Shepard had a nightmare, but of course, Oli Agiojo also did poop. And Tom Stainer, he had a good one as well. Well done, of course, to the patrons supporting the channel. Let's take a look at, of course, the leaderboard for this week and this week alone. Zappy Crook, Shepard, Oli Agiojo, Jamie Gordon, the D-Man. Shut your bloody eyes. As for the top three or four there, Ultra Oli Hamlin, Jakob Jackson, and Richard Dawson kicked ass. And they are your kings for this week, so give them a round. 
random body paws. Uh, boys and girls, I don't know if it's much in between three or two. I have no idea. But anyway, let's take a look at the overall leaderboard. Let's take a look at it. Of course, if your name is Default Profile or Scotty Boy, close your bloody eyes. But of course, if your name is Russell Frost, take a bloody bow. So you are overall leader as it stands. There is a, there is a difference between yourself and Gaming Charlie, but it is minute percentage points at the moment. Oh, my is not too far away either, as is Yoko Yakson. And OK is in the top five. Uh, but of course, it can all change in this week. Of course, there's a bumper one because we have got a whole host of fixtures. We've got, we got the usual 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 matches to take a little look at it this week. So we're going to kick it all off. Uh, we, we, we've got condensed uh, stats for you here because um, it's too messy and it's too much to go over. So we're just going to go over the last six of all, including the first one, which is Scunthorpe up against Salford. Uh, in fact, they've only played each other once in the recent times. There's been a draw that was in Salford uh, back in October. It was a 1-1 draw back in the day. Uh, goal scores on the day. Cameron Burgess for Salford. Keevan Van Veen on scores for Scunthorpe. Heading into this, Scunthorpe actually uh, uh, just one minute four for them. Meanwhile, Salford actually back-to-back -back defeats for them, losing to the late Norwich and losing to uh, Mansfield. Haven't had a good year so far. Look at the situation out in the bookies on this one then, shall we? We have 23-10 uh, to 10 for Scunthorpe. 5-2 to is your draw and 23-20 to 20 is your Salford. Salford come into this in, 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 in eighth and for them they could go as high as fifth where Scunthorpe are climbing but slowly, slowly but surely into 20th at the moment but for them they could go as high as 16th I'm going with a 2-1 win for the home team. That's Scunny. They'll get the three points and they'll carry on climbing the table. Next up we've had to get up against the leaders Carlisle. They play each other. They haven't. They haven't played each other in forever. I don't know. Uh, but heading into this of course Harrogate took two wins and two defeats in the past four. They started off 2021 with a defeat. Uh, as for Carlisle they were looking pretty good at the moment. Just one defeat in the past five for them losing to Forest Green Rovers back in the 19th of December. Uh, but they've started 2021 in tip top shape by beating Warsaw Cup again uh, at least on the 2nd of, of Jan. Uh, this will be the first game if it goes ahead. Anyway, kicking off forward then. How to get against uh, Carlisle. 40 to 5 for the bookies for the hosts. 30 to 5 is draw. 2019 on is your Carlisle. Of course, they come into this. Pops, oh, pops. Oh, yeah. if they win, uh, they will remain at top of the, uh, top of the league status. Uh, but of course, they're the coming into this. Harrogate are in 80 spot. But for them, they could go as high as a 13th in the table. I'll go with Carlisle. I like Carlisle. They'll, get, they'll carry on with a 2021 with another win. With a 2 0 win in the bag. Kicking on forward though. Exeter City taking on Bolton Wanderers. Let's take a close look at this one then, shall we? They play each other. They haven't. They have not played just like the last one. They haven't played each other in a long time. They've got identical records heading into this. Uh, winning one of the past uh, six. Uh, Bolton winning, beating Cheltenham. Back on the 15th of December, they've also started 2021 with a shit show, uh, losing to Crawley at home. Same can be said for um, Exeter. Uh, they kicked on uh, 2021 with a defeat against Sheffield Wednesday in the FA Cup 2-0 loss at home. They also lost, or well, last time they won was back in, uh, on the 12th of the 12th against Tranmere at home as well. Look at the situation out with the bookies on this one then, shall we? Exeter are actually 43 on for the W. 14 to 5 is draw. 72 is your Bolton. Bolton coming to this in 17th and with them. They could go as high as 12th. Exeter coming to this in 10th and with them. They could go as high as 7th or even six. That's playoff talk, boys and girls. I've gone with Exeter and Bolton to share the points. 1-1 one, one, right down the middle. Uh, next up, we have Oldham taking on Mansfield Town. Of course, Mansfield making the moves uh, last time around. Where are they now on the table? 16 for the moment. But anyway, I'll play sure that in the past, the last 63 was Oldham, two was for Mansfield and one draw. Last time out in Oldham was a 3-1 win for Oldham at Boundary Park. Johnny Smith, Thomas Hammer and Giovaro Nemacomuno uh, on the score sheet. That was back in the uh, 20th of Jan last year. Uh, Otis Carnal score sheet for Mansfield as well. Heading into this, just one defeat the past five for Mansfield. That one defeat was against Cheltenham. Of course, they did. Uh, that was a, a, actually a third game already in 2021. Packing the games in. Meanwhile, just one to win in the past five for uh, Oldham. That one win was against uh, Newport County back in the middle of, uh, of December as uh, 2020 came to a close. Look at the bookies odds on this one. Shall we playing on Wednesday, the uh, 30th of Jan, 15 to 8 for Oldham. 23 to 10 is draw. 7 to 5 is your Mansfield on this one. Mansfield coming to this in 16th. Uh, went for them. They could go as high as 12th. Oldham coming to this in 15th. And went for them. They could go as high as 11th in the table. I've gone with a tuna win for the away team. That's right, Mansfield will take the three points and carry on moving up the table. Into the Saturday's fixture. Now we're going to cram them all into one video. Uh, let's take a look at it then, shall we? So we'll have a bumper one next week uh, to look back on. Barrow taking on, of course, Scunthorpe United. A bit of a struggling one, this one. Played each other in the past. Um... Uh, earlier in the season, actually, they played uh, back in, in Scunthorpe. It was uh, back in the 15th of December, just a couple of weeks ago. 2 1 win for Scunthorpe. Uh, Abu Issa and Jordan Clark on scorching for Scunny. Scott Quigley on scorching for Barrow. Heading into just one win the past four for Barrow. 
Scrap that, chew it, flip it around, and, and spit it right back out. I actually tell that a lie. There's only one defeat in the past four for them. That one defeat was against South End, as they also start 21 with a defeat. On the flip side, uh, Scunthorpe coming to, I'm coming to this just one win in the past four for them. That one was against Walsall, of course. So look at the situation out in the table. Uh, with the bookies, then, shall we? Uh, 2019 on for Barrow. They are the favourites. 5 2 is your 12 to 5 is your away win on this one. Barrow coming to this in 21st. Scunny coming to this in 20th. Uh, of course, Scunthorpe uh, back two games this week and win for them. Both of them, and they could go as high as 12th. Uh, but uh, just the one win could also go as high as 17th in the table. Uh, Barrow come to this uh, win 21st spot and win for them. They could go as high as 20th. That's Leapfrog in Scunthorpe in the process. I've gone with a draw on this one. Yep, yep, nil, nil, nil in the end. Uh, next up, we have Bolton also playing double match week for them. Taking on, of course, Cheltenham. High Flyers, of course, or uh, played each other in the past. A couple of times, anyway, in recent re records, just one win apiece, including a win earlier in the campaign. And Cheltenham was a one win for Bolton. That's right. Goodness gracious me. Ryan Delaney on score sheet. However, they did play in the Papa John's Trophy a couple of years back, uh, 2016. In Cheltenham was a 1-0 win for Cheltenham. Uh, Ari Morgan Smith on the penalty spot. Heading into this, though, uh, just uh, one win in the past six for Cheltenham. The one was against Mansfield in the FA Cup to go through to the next round. Just one win in the past five for Bolton. That one was against Cheltenham as well. Of course, the last win was against Cheltenham. So put that in your pipe and smoke it, uh, pals. A look at the bookies odds on this one, then, shall we? Bolton 9 4 for the W5 to choose your even Stevens. That is Cheltenham. Of course, Cheltenham just the one game this week. Win for them in that one game. They could go from fifth all the way up to second in the table. Bolton have actually got six points. On the table on the offering and away for them from 17th they could go as high as 29th 32nd that's a 10th in the table and that means playoffs will be back on the agenda again i've gone with a 2-1 win for the home team that's right i believe in the bolton they'll climb out of this and start to make a push for those playoffs next up a team also trying to make a push for the playoffs it is an unbeaten bradford unbeaten the last five taking on of course trawley town looking very very good for themselves at the moment look at the situation for them place in the last five four for bradford one for crawley and one draw last time out in bradford was 2-1 win for bradford that's back in the 19th of the 10th uh 2019 at uh but a Valley Parade, Harry Pritchard, Daniel Devine on score sheet, Reese Gregor Cox on score sheet, Crawley heading into this. Of course, they played earlier in the campaign, it was a 1-1 draw, and Crawley um, heading into this, though, to both these two teams looking very, very good for themselves. Four wins in the past six for Crawley, the other two were draw, so basically unbeaten in the last six uh, heading into this, and they do, do sit in sixth at the table. Bradford Cup is unbeaten in the last five, winning three and drawing two, also starting to climb the table as well. Look at the situation out of the bookies on this tough one, a to call this one. Uh, what have we got on this one? Bradford are actually 75 for the number, 23 to 10 is your draw, 13 to 8 is your crawl. Crawley. Crawley coming to this in uh, in sixth and win for them. They could go as high as third in the tier. Bradford coming to this in 19th and win for them. They could actually go as high as 15th in the league. I've gone with a Bradford City win. Yes, I have with the one to win to take three points at Valley Parade. Next up, we have the Battle of the Seas. It's Colchester taking on Cambridge. Let's take a closer look at, look at this bad boy then, shall we? There it is. Of course, played each other in the last 62 as a culture, Colchester. Four wins for Cambridge and no draws. Last time out in Colchester was a 2-1 win for Cambridge. That was back in August, uh, August 2019. Mark Richards and Harry Darling on the score sheet. Luke Norris on the score sheet for Colchester. The last time out, though, uh, in Cambridge early in the season was 2-1 win also for Cambridge. Uh, Paul Mullen with a couple of goals. He's on fire right now. And Michael Volvi on score sheet for Colchester. The final penalty spot. Heading into this, uh, Colchester without winning four at least, with losing three and drawing one. On the flip side, just three three wins in the past four games for Cambridge. Their only defeat was against uh, Stevenage at the end of 2020. And the uh, end of the year with a defeat. But back-to-back -back wins for them heading into 2021, of course. Uh, look at the boogies. Oh, 70 to 10 for Colchester. 12 to 5 is your draw. 11 to 8 is your Cambridge. Cambridge coming to this in, uh, of course, third. And for them, they could go... The big fat W, of course. Colchester coming to this in 12th. And for them, they could go as high as 10th in the bloody league. I've gone with Cambridge on this one. 2 0 went away from home. Kicking off over, we have Stephen up against Tramier. Let's take a close look at this one. Then, shall we score the pace in the last six? He's one with a piece. Four draws last time out in uh, Stephen's. was a 2 2 draw back in 2018. Around about August, James Norwood with a couple of goals. Jimmy Ball and Joel Byron uh, for Stephen. Joey Hunt got himself sent off. They did play earlier in the campaign. No, they didn't. No, they have did. They have not played earlier in the campaign. Heading into this, though, Tramia actually just one win the four. That one was, against, one win was against Bolton, of course, back end of uh, 2020, of course. Uh, meanwhile, just one defeat the past four games for Stevenage. That one, one defeat was against Swansea in the FA Cup. Uh, prior to that, uh, unbeaten in three uh, in League Two, of course. So Stevenage may be starting to make a push as well uh, uh, up the table. Of course, look at the bookies' odds on this one then, shall we? What do we have? What do we have? 70 to 10 for Stevenage, 23 to 10 is your 75 is your Tramia. Of course, Tramia looking also for promotion. 14th for the table at the moment, but for them, they could go as high as 10th. Stevenage are in 22nd and win for them, they could go as high as 20th in the league. I've gone with a tuna win though for Tramir. 
They might not have the form uh, at the moment, but uh, I think they're going to take the three points with the W. Next up, we have Walsall taking on, of course, Oldham Athletic. Let's take a closer look at this one then, shall we? Place it in the last 63 for Walsall, two for Oldham, and one draw. Last time out in Walsall was a 2 1 win for Walsall. That's back in 2017, of course, in August. Uh, Joe Edwards and Ed Ermin Utsama on score sheet. Ryan McLaughlin on score sheet for Oldham. Heading into this, though, uh, Walsall, three defeats on spin in all comps. Uh, meanwhile, just one win in the past five for Oldham. That one was against Newport. And of course, they got back to back games this week. Chance to pick up six points on the chasing back. Uh, look at the situation and the bookies. Uh, 20 to 19 on for Walsall. 30 to 5 is your draw. 11 to 5 is your Oldham on this one. Oldham can make up six points, like I said, and win for both of them. They could go as high as eighth in the table. Walsall come to us in 11th and win for them. They could also go as high as eighth in the table. Back of the eighth. Who's going to take it? I think Walsall will make this one 2 1. Uh, Oldham will make it back to back defeats in this double bubble right here. Next up, they have the Vegans taking on Port Vale, of course. Start off the season. Okay. Okay, Port Vale, where they look absolutely shit at the moment. Pitch of the last six is two minutes apiece and two draws. Last time out in uh, Forest Green was a 3-2 win for Port Vale. Uh, Sean Brisley, Tom Pope with a couple of goals. Uh, Mitchell Clark and Tom Pope also got himself carded. Red carded. Carl Winchester from Supernatural. Or one of the brothers, of course. Uh, double bubble for him as Forest Green got himself a couple of points. Heading into this, though, Forest Green just one defeat the past five for them. Losing to Crawley last, at the end of 2020. On the flip side, just one uh, win at the past five for uh, Port Vale. One was against Grimsby uh, last time around. Of course, look at the bookies' odds on this one then shall we what do we have what do we have Forest Green Rovers are actually 5 to 4 on for the W 35 is your 45 is your Port Vale Port Vale coming in this in 13 for the win for them they could go 10th the vegans are in 4th for the win for them they could go of course I've gone with uh, the vegans on this one with the tuna win over Port Vale Grimsby taking on South End let's take a close look at this one then shall we play each other three times the past one win for South End two draws and nothing for Grimsby last time I in Grimsby was back in 2005 in League 2 it was a draw Michael Reddy on the score sheet Freddie Eastwood that's the name for the past of course, they did play earlier in the campaign. It was a 3 woman for South End down at Roots Hall. Carts up here, boys. Carl Taylor, Tom Clifford, Greg Olford on score sheet. Ella Jackson Jr. on score sheet of Grimsley and Luke Waterfall as well. Heading into this, of course, South End. Just one defeat pass uh, five for them, losing to uh, Leighton Orient at the back end of 2020. Uh, without a win in five, that's Grimsley. Four defeats and a draw to boot. Grimsley looking wobbly, uh, if not horrific at the moment. Look at the situation out of the boogies on this one then. Grimsley are actually 21 to 20 for the W. 25 is your 11 to 5 is your away win. That's South End. Uh, South End competitors, of course, rooted to the table, but a win for them. They could go as high as 21st in the table. Grimsby actually in 23rd. A win for them. They could also go as high as 20th in the table. A uh, big week this week for, uh, well, not really, not really a big week for them. Uh, what am I talking about? Uh, moving on, I'm going to go with a one win for Grimsby on this one. Yeah, so, uh, going against the grain. Grimsby's form is shit. South End's form is good. Really, uh, it could be the start of a reboot for Grimsby, but we just don't know. How to get taken on at Exeter. Let's take a look at this one then. Shall we play each other in the last time out, which was earlier in the campaign. Back in the December, of course, it was a 2 one win for Harrogate in Exeter, of course. Goal scores on the day. Brendan Kierman, Jack Muldoon, Jack Taylor on scorching for Exeter, of course. Heading into this as two wins and two defeats in the past four games for Exeter. Uh, just one win in the past five for uh, Exeter. Uh, sorry. Two wins and two defeats in the past four games for Harrogate. Uh, beating Exeter and also beating Oldham. On the flip side, just one win in the past five for Exeter. That one was against uh, Tramere uh, midway through the month of uh, December. Look at the bookies' odds on this one then. Shh. Shall we? We have Harrogate, uh, 5 2 for the W, 5 2 is the draw. 10, 11 10 on is your Exeter. Exeter are Stone Gold Bears. They have also got a double bubble this week, as do Harrogate. Uh, Exeter, if they win, Exeter, if they win both of those games, they could go from 10th all the way up to set third in the table. Goodness gracious me. Harrogate also got six points on the offering and win for them. They could go from 18th all the way up to 10th in the table. So, big week for both of them. I'm going to go with on this one with the two and win for the way team. That's Exeter to make it four points and six for them this week. Lane Orient taking on, of course. They're taking on Morka, my boys. Uh, played each other in the past. Well, my boys but you know my, my soft spot uh, of course pleasure the six times in the past three wins piece and no draws they did play uh, in uh, Brisbane Road back in 2017 it was a one who went for Morecambe uh, Paul Mullen on the score sheet goodness gracious me uh, he was a Morecambe lad uh, of course uh, but they also played earlier in the campaign and in Morecambe it was a two win for Morecambe in fact you could go all the way back to 2016 for uh, late Norris last victory over Morecambe that was um, uh, in Morecambe it was a two one win for Orient back in the day of course uh, uh, Morecambe competitors just uh, there's Chelsea they played uh, and the last five games in all competitions they lost once that one game was against Chelsea on the flip side back to back wins for uh, Orient beating Southend and also beating Salford uh, as they kick start the end of the year and also start the new year with wins of course look at the bookies odds on this one then shall we we have 5-4 for Leighton Orient 12-5 for sure 7-4 is your Morecambe of course Leighton Orient coming to this in 9th and win for them they could go as high as 5th uh, Morecambe coming to this in 7th and win for them they could go as high as 3rd in the tier but I've gone with a draw on this one yes I have with a 1-1 draw in the end can't separate the two sides can you uh, kick it on forward though we have uh, Mansfield taking on Carlisle take a closer look at this one then shall we play each other in the past 
last uh, th uh, six times on the last six. Uh, three uh, three wins for Masvidal, two for Khalil, and one draw last time out in Masvidal. was a 2-2 draw back in February 2020. Uh, Nicky Maynard with a couple of goals there. Elliot Ward and Joshua Corrode uh, on the score sheet for Carlisle. Heading into this though, Carlisle, uh, one one lost one draw in the past three. On the flip side, Masvidal Cup just one defeat the past five. Uh, one defeat was against Cheltenham in the FA Cup. Look at the situation out of the bookies on this one. Masvidal are actually 70-10 to 10 for the W25 is draw. 30-10 to 10 is your Carlisle. Of course, Masvidal come to this in uh, 16th at the moment. They have a double match week for them and a win for them. Both of those games could shoot them up to 10th in the table. Whereas, of course, Carlisle come to this top of the pops and a win for them. They will be top of the pops in the bloody end. They've played a game more than Newport, so they actually played two games more. Uh, they've actually played a, a game more than Newport. Game less than Cambridge. There we go. There we go. Click. Clicked into place. So I've gone with on this one. 2 on win for Carlisle. Of course they have. Of course they have. And then we do have, of course, one of the favourites. Of course, Newport taking on Salford. Played sure in the past four times. Two wins for Salford. One win for Newport and one draw. Last time out in Newport was in the FA Cup. And this season, of course, three. They win for Newport. Goodness gracious me. Uh, Jamie Proctor, Patrick Amon and Saku Jani on the score sheet. Brendan Thomas Ashanti got himself sent off. However, last time played sure that in the league in Newport was a 2 win for Salford. That was back in November 2019. Cameron Burgess and Lewis Maynard on the score sheet. Nathan Pond with a big fat OG. Uh, giving Newport consolation. Heading into this, though, though, though Newport without a win in five. On the flip side, back-to-back -back defeats for Salford as they've uh, started 2020 in shit form. Of course, look at the bookies' odds on this one then. Shall we have Newport County, Newport County. Uh, 21 to 20, 21 to 20 for the W23 to 10 is your 23 to 10 is your Salford. Of course, Salford comes to this in uh, eighth inning. I think they've got a double match week. Yes, they have. Potentially could go as high as top of the pops, boys. Top of the bloody pops, boys. New Newport County could also go top of the pops in the end with a win and a bit of luck going their way. I've gone with on this one. 3 0 win for Newport County to get back to winning ways and to kick on their season as they do. And if I'm right, which I believe will help, so con congesting everything into one shape. Uh, Carlisle will be top of the box by four points clear over Newport County. Cambridge will be into the top three as well. Remain top three. Forest Green, Exeter, Cheltenham and Morecambe maintain playoff status. Meanwhile, Southend, Stephen is going down as it bloody stands. Be sure to get your picks in nice and early for this one. Of course, we'll be back, of course, for the next round of matches uh, probably a week week today, give or take, depending on what goes on. Uh, if it's a double match, I don't know. I'm not looking forward. Uh, but anyway, that's it, my friends. Be sure to give the video some love and please smash that thumbs up. Of course, let's make 2021 the year for Black and Rose Let's get this channel kicked on further up the old uh, uh, up the old charts there. And of course, if you're new, bang me up, subscribe, check out the links down below, Twitch, Twitch, Facebook, and again, if you want to support the channel in another way, uh, Patreon's the place to do it. Patreon.com forward slash Rose But until then, though, happy predicting, happy 2021. Of course, I'll see you all very, very soon. But say, stay safe out there. Stay uh, safe.